Friday with a heartbreaking update on the case of Relentless Church versus Redemption Church. Church versus Church. Relentless Church has officially received an eviction notice filed through the court system. I verify this is filed through the court system and they've received the notice to vacate. A notice of ejection informing them that they need to vacate the building. Now previously on my channel, I released a notice of the lease termination, a 30 day notice. They were supposed to be out of the building by December 31st, but as John Gray said in his New Year's Eve watch night service, we're not supposed to be here right now, but they were still there. They didn't vacate the building and now legal proceedings have been taking place that have been provided to me and um, it's getting real. This eviction is real. I verified this. This document that I'm sharing with you, the summons for relief and the request for ejection of Relentless Church was provided to me by email, but I did verify it's a public record in the state of South Carolina has officially been filed in the Court of Common Pleas and there's official demand of ejectment of Relentless Church. So the official eviction notice of Relentless, John Gray's Church Relentless being evicted from the property that is owned by Redemption has been made public. It was actually emailed to me last night. It was emailed to me last night and it's official, it's a court record, it's a public record. And I did verify that it is, um, it has been filed. This case number is a correct and accurate case number. This is really happening. And this is really sad. This is really happening and this is really sad. We have church versus church, redemption church versus relentless church. So this has been filed in the state of South Carolina. Shout out to my South Carolina subscribers. This is the Court of Common Pleas. And it starts out basically, they just say, like most lawsuits, they start out saying, I'm in the correct court. This is how it starts off. It just verifies I'm in the correct court. These are the parties and the jurisdiction. Now, I wanted to point out, because we're gonna see the term GSC Ministries mentioned a lot throughout this lawsuit. And I just want to clarify, Redemption Church, which was owned, which is owned by Ron Carpenter, Redemption and the Imagine Center Incorporated, which is a part of Ron Carpenter's organization as well, are collectively referred to as GSC Ministries. So when you see that in that in this lawsuit, it's referring to Redemption Church. GSC Ministries is Redemption Church. So in 2017, Ron Carpenter and the GSC Ministries entered into an agreement with Pastor John Gray, in which among other matters, John Gray agreed to assume the leadership of GSC Ministries and to assume responsibility for the assets owned by it. This is the heart of the case. I don't know if y'all knew this. I didn't know this until reading this, this lawsuit that John Gray was to assume the leadership of GSC Ministries. He wasn't supposed to start his own ministry. That That's the heart of the matter. He wasn't supposed to start his own ministry. He was supposed to assume the leadership of GSC Ministries according to this lawsuit. It says it was the intent of the parties that agreed that GSC Ministries would be rebranded. Now, rebranding is not a whole new corporation. Rebranding is basically a new name. New name, new faces, new image. It was supposed to be rebranded to use a new name that had not been selected as of the date of the agreement and that the management and control of the GSC Ministries operating under that new name would transition to John Gray and a team selected by John Gray. And as an implicit part of that understanding, the GSC Ministries mortgage debt on the properties would continue to be serviced by the GSC Ministries under John Gray's leadership as rebranded by John Gray. So it says John Gray chose Relentless as a new name for the ministry. However, however, rather than rebranding the GSC Ministries as he agreed, and let me just say this. Let me stop right here and say this. This lawsuit, the plaintiff is redemption. So the statements I'm making are redemption statements. Um, so I almost want to say allegedly, but I just want you to know the point of view is from redemption. The point 
that this is written from is from redemption. So when it says that John Gray agreed to this and John Gray agreed to that, it's not John Gray saying himself that this is what he agreed to, it's redemption saying that this is what John Gray agreed to. I just wanna make that clear. It says, however, rather than rebranding the GSC Ministries as agreed in the agreement, John Gray incorporated an entirely new entity, the Relentless Church. So instead of instead of being the head of GSC Ministries, he incorporated a new entity. And he did that in March of 2018. It says it in another point that he did that in March of 2018. So he was already in the property. He took over the property in late 2017 and in March of 2018, right here in number nine, he informed Redemption that Relentless wished to purchase the assets of GSC Ministries rather than following through with the agreement. So this is the problem. He doesn't wanna lead GSC Ministries. He wants to start his own ministry and purchase the real property. He wants to purchase the buildings and start his own ministry. And at the end of this video, I'll give my opinion on why, because this, this situation, when I look at it, it's almost like no one, it's like you can't pinpoint who is at fault. It's really a business disagreement. Like this all comes down to business. It's not anyone being dishonest, to be honest with you, but I'll get into that later. This is all business. It goes on to say, unfortunately, after agreeing to the terms of an asset transfer agreement negotiated between the parties, Gray refused to execute and deliver the asset transfer agreement and the GSC Ministries rescinded their previous approval of the agreement. Now here is where we're gonna get into the oral agreement in the in the media, on YouTube. <laughs> Shout out to Larry Reed Live. <laughs> and actually Larry Reed Live covered this um, last night, but I still wanted to cover this because this is something that I've been following. This is something I've been following for a while and I wanna give my subscribers an update on exactly what is going on especially since i feel like some of my subscribers are members from the comments i'm receiving from the last videos i've done on this situation i feel like these are members commenting and i'll tell you why at the end of this video why i feel like it's these members that are commenting on my videos it goes on to say as a part of the negotiation of the asset transfer agreement the parties propose written leases the proposed leases for the properties to be ex executed by Relentless as a tenant. Tenant, tenant. Now that's a big word, it's a big word. I should highlight it, tenant. Because these things make a difference. A tenant, a tenant, a tenant. Okay, there's a difference between an owner and a tenant. So now, relentless because they've incorporated themselves and they're in an entirely different organization now they're a tenant and i also think that's the second problem here now this one statement statement 10 is a short statement but it says a lot the fact that john gray is now a tenant instead of taking over gsc ministries as the leader of that ministry he's now a tenant on the property so this becomes a basic tenant and property owner agreement he's a tenant he's a tenant so that is a big deal and it's it's tearing the church apart. It goes on to say that although the proposed leases were provided to Relentless, they were never executed and delivered to redemption. Delivery is a prerequisite to the validity of any written lease. Absent delivery, the proposed leases never went into effect. And that's why we keep saying that there is an oral agreement. That's because the written agreement was never executed. And I'm, like I said, I'm gonna get into, at the end of this video, I'm gonna get into why I think they were never executed. So it goes on to say, Relentless has failed and refused to vacate the properties as required by South Carolina law. Additionally, John Gray and Relentless were unable to service the debt on the Imagine Center, which again, I said is part of the GSC Ministries. And it says, as a result of Relentless's inability to keep the mortgage debt on the Imagine Center current, the GSC Ministries, under Ron Carpenter's leadership and with the help of Ron Carpenter's other ministry organizations, had to take the necessary steps to pay the debt in full in order to avoid that debt being foreclosed on. So in order to avoid foreclosure on the property, the real estate property, the real property, the two buildings, Ron Carpenter just paid off the debt. 
so there was allegedly a statement made by John Gray that there was no mortgage on the property, that the property was paid off. And this lawsuit is saying that it was paid off by Ron Carpenter and his other ministries because it was in danger of foreclosure. So rather than let, now this is, I'm going to say all allegedly, rather than let John Gray and Relentless Church occupy a building that's going to be foreclosed on because they're not, allegedly not paying the mortgage, Ron Carpenter just paid off the mortgage, according to this document. All right, so we're just going to get into what does Redemption Church and Ron Carpenter, what do they want? A, is that they want Relentless Church to show cause why it should not be ejected from the properties. So basically, they want them to respond to the lawsuit. They want them to show cause. And then B, they want a hearing within 10 days of the service of said rule to show cause. And then C and D, C and D are so funny to me because C and D is basically... Are we finished or are we done? On C, they say they want an order of following said hearing ejecting relentless from the properties or D, an order of the court declaring that relentless is in default of its obligation under the proposed leases, that relentless has no further right to possession or the use of the properties, and that relentless is to be ejected from the properties. So C and D are basically the same thing. They want relentless ejected from the properties. Are we finished or are we done? So that's the update, you guys. Um, I said I was gonna give my opinion at the end, and I am curious. If you watch Larry Reed Live, Larry Reed Live reported on the story, and he said there was a debt in the in the negotiation process, in the negotiation of the transfer agreement. There was a debt that came up that Redemption, Redemption Church allegedly owes a debt to another religious organization that funded Redemption Church. And during the transition agreement, during the negotiation of the transition agreement between Relentless and Redemption, that debt came into play. So I'm curious in my personal opinion, as far as why John Gray, instead of taking over the ministry, decided to form an entirely new legal entity and buy the ministry's property. I'm curious is if it's because of that debt. I don't know the amount of that debt, um, and that debt is alleged, but I, but it's my opinion that that debt has something to do with why the original transition agreement was not executed. That's that's my personal opinion, and that's a question that I have personally. That's my question. But this is the update. It breaks my heart to give this update because basically, when you come on television, John Gray started coming on television on a talk show called The Preachers, and then he had his own reality show called The Book of John Gray. To me, when you come on television and start representing the church, it puts you on a certain level and it puts you on a certain platform to where I feel like you have to be a good representation of the church. If you're gonna represent the church, be a good representation. And I feel like the clash and the disagreement between Ron Carpenter and John Gray is a negative. It's a very bad representation of the church. It's, it saddens me to give people that type a fodder, a fodder from the Christian community. And that's why I've kind of like taken a step back when reporting on this. But I figure since this has been filed legally, this is an important update. I will continue to give you updates. Um, but at the same time, like I said, I'm, I'm in a certain way, I have removed myself from this situation because it, it has literally broken my heart as a Christian person. It's, it's broken my heart to watch this happen. Um, so I'll only be doing the major updates and I consider this a major update. So thanks for watching. Bye.